Bill Harlow, a former chief spokesman for the CIA. Bill, good morning. Good morning. So interesting that the Russians would invest this kind of time and serious money in putting these people in these seemingly benign sort of suburban settings. What do you think the motivation was? Well, you know, it's clear that even though the Cold War is over, the Russians are still hot on gathering new information about the United States, and they're using some very old methods like this. It's typical of the Russian MO to, to do this kind of thing. They're very patient. They take people, embed them into our society, and they troll for information, trying to find information which eventually down the road may be of use to them. And it was interesting to me because as we looked at some of the settings that these folks were put in and their inability to actually collect information, I kept thinking all they could have, they could have sat home and watched Real Housewives and found out just about as much as, as they did living in Montclair. Well, the business model, the way they did it, is certainly not the way that that you would think would be the most efficient way of collecting information. But it is typical of what the KGB did back in the 50s and 60s. The Russians are very patient. They bring people over here. They let them stay for years and years in hopes of getting them close to people who have information which would be available to them. And whether they hadn't yet reached that point, whether they ever would, we may mm. not know. Yeah. Uh, but, but obviously the, the Russians wouldn't have invested all the time, the effort, the rubles it took to carry off this mission if they didn't think they were going to be getting something out of it. Almost like a sleeper cell, so to speak. You implant these people, let them stay for decades and decades if need be in order to perhaps do whatever in the, in the future. We're not talking about necessarily attacking the United States, but try to get some sort of information in the long, long, long term. One of the things that's been interesting in this is, you know, hearing about all the real live cloak and dagger stuff they were trying to pull off. Try to explain, if you don't mind, this, this whole business of steganography which is an ancient form of passing information that goes all the way back to the Greeks. Right. It goes back thousands of years. Basically, it's hiding information in plain sight. Uh, back thousands of years ago, the Spartans took bowls, carved information into those bowls, covered it with wax. When the bowl reached its intended recipient, he would melt the wax and read the message, uh, message underneath. Nowadays, it's done with photography digital photography, so someone could receive a photograph which appears to be of their cousin on their summer vacation, a normal picture, but underneath that picture, embedded, encrypted in di digital form, would be a message or a picture telling them what the, their, in this case, the Moscow Center wanted them to do. And it can be used for two-way communications back and forth, difficult to detect for the average uh, person viewing it, but very valuable way of passing information using the internet and other other uh, techniques. Because something like that you could put in a public file, for instance, on the internet, as opposed to trying to encrypt a message in your own personal email, and chances are would never be detected. Very interesting right. Your stuff. average viewer would, would not uh, notice any difference at all. There you go. Bill Harlow, thank you so much. A lot happens early on The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS.